hello friends so in this video we are going to have a look on the basic understanding of how to use a thread in our application so uh, before going further let's have a quick overview of what a thread is so the thread is a lightweight process that is uh, like any other process that is spawned uh, from the kernel side but they have some you know very important features like uh, they share the same address space of the process on which that thread is being spawned so the kernel don't have you know uh, differentiation between the thread and a process they will consider thread as well as a process so uh, on the kernel side a thread is also a process they will allocate a you know PID for that uh, thread also in the kernel space so the thread uh, if you take a differentiation between a thread and a process so the thread have their own address space and various other things are being shared from the main process right so let's start uh, with our coding so so for using a thread we need to include one header that is pthread dot h right so so how the thread is created so we are using an api that is pthread underscore create right and there are four parameters to this uh, api so the first one is the thread id where this pthread create will save their thread id so the thread id is you know unique for each thread so that the os will differentiate between the different threads and then we have the attribute section in which if we want to have some modification on like we need to change the stack size or we need to make our thread you know uh, detachable so various other settings are there in pthread attribute flag and the third one is the routine uh, which is being called when we use the pthread create right so we'll write uh, the routine in such a way that the return type will be the same as well as the argument will be of type white star so we are using the white star because we don't know what our data we are passing to this function and the last parameter here is the argument which we want to pass to this routine which would be available into this routine through white star so let's create this routine first before going further so that we can fill up this pthread create structure so that our you know thread is being created so the return parameter is white star here so we'll take uh, the routine as a thread uh, routine right and then the parameters are white star again because uh, that uh, pthread uh, you know is having the you know uh, this function pointer where we are going to uh, you know point uh, this thread routine to that function pointer we'll feed this uh, thread routine right so let's take a simple example and uh, we'll return null from here because we don't want to return anything from this uh, api and in this routine we are going to have printf so just write like uh, thread is executing so we'll take here some id and we'll write it here like uh, we take a thread id as integer static integer static integer x is equal to zero then we'll have x plus plus right so we have wrote a simple routine for our uh, thread uh, create api so we need to create one more uh, you know variable which will save 
our thread id so it will be of the type v thread underscore t and we have the thread id here right so just a simple function now we are going to fill up this p thread create so we'll first parameter is you said uh, like we have this uh, we have to pass this variable to save the our thread id into that so thread id here then the next parameter uh, is attributes so we are taking null right now because we don't want to modify our thread so we'll talk about this p thread attributes in the later video so uh, the next one is our thread routine which will be called when this thread will be created and that will be thread routine here and the last parameter is the argument which we want to pass to this routine and which is as accessible through this arg here and uh, right now we'll taking as null here so next so once we spawn this you know p thread create it will it will call this api and it will print something on our console so the next thing we need to use is to wait for this thread to finish so we'll using the p thread join api and the parameters here are the thread id is the first one and the next is the return from the thread so we are taking the null here as a you know return from this uh, routine so we'll taking the same like uh, we have the thread routine so thread id then the next one we don't want to uh, you know capture any return from this routine so we're taking as null here so what's the use of this p thread join is if we don't want uh, you know we don't use this p thread join then this main function will finish so as you know the p thread will share the address space with the main process so the once this main process you know exited our threads will also be exited so in order to avoid this we are using p thread join uh, so that uh, the thread will be finished and this p thread join will wait for this uh, you know thread to finish right so so here is our small you know code uh, to create a thread and let's you know run this gcc hyphen o thread let's take t capital here and then we have thread dot c and one thing uh, while compiling we want to add the thread library external to that so that our code will you know uh, remember or resolve this p thread uh, create and p thread join api so let's okay so our you know api this function uh, this file has been compiled now now let's run this and check what happens so let's have the thread sorry it's a capital one so you see here thread zero is executing right so we'll get this print okay so as we have seen how to spawn a thread in a process the next task is to uh, you know check the thread info in our os so for that i just take an api of get care and uh, just put it here so that our bow our thread will stop in get character and we can analyze our thread right just save it and then just compile it and uh, once we run this executable it will be stopped at get character and waiting for my input and uh, till now we'll just check uh, how to check uh, how many threads are there in a process so we'll take ps-ax to check for the pid of our main process so grep for thread so see here our pid for the main process is 8626 and now we'll checking uh, for the main 
process how many threads they have so we use the top command hyphen h hyphen p for process and then the process id is 8626 so once we click on that so we'll have uh, two threads so as we have created only one thread so how they have two threads so they are taking uh, the main process also so it is listed here so we as a kernel side as i already told they will treat the thread as a process so will they will you know create the process id for our thread as well so they have 8627 is the pid uh, for our thread on the kernel side and uh, but this process will share the space from 8626 uh, and it is lightweight so here we have uh, two of our threads are sleeping and uh, you know all other details uh, regarding our uh, process and threads so if you want you know to take this input from you know on from the file system in the kernel so we can have cd hyphen proc so we have 8626 is a pid of our main process so once we go in there we need to check the task folder in which you will see uh, the same two process so first one is our parent uh, main process and this is the thread process you can say okay so if you want to check like uh, how many uh, threads are being spawned so you can you know take you can go back and just check for the status file so if you have status file here so just go to thread so you will see there are two threads so this file system uh, you know uh, files are important when you are running some system app and you don't want some overhead of the top api so for that purpose you can uh, go to this uh, proc file system for your main process and check uh, you know all the details regarding your process as well as your uh, thread and if you want to check like how many uh, threads are you know uh, you can spawn within a process what is the maximum limit of your process so let's uh, you know stop this and uh, once we have thread maximum Okay. once you read this file for thread maximum it will give you the default value uh, what one process uh, can spawn uh, the maximum number of threads so this is the value you can change it also so thanks